Assalamualaikum. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi dan Sri. Apa khabar Samsul? Baik baik baik. Alhamdulillah. Pergi <coughs> tak jumpa pun. <coughs> ah itu ada ada program lain Tansi. Lagi pun kita diberi diberi link. Dengan mana kut? <laughs> Okey, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Eh, saya nak. Okey, bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala asyrafil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajmain. Honorable Emeritus Professor Tan Sri Zulkifli Abdul Razak, Director of International Islamic University Malaysia, Associate Professor Dr. Lihana binti Burhan. Director Office of Knowledge for Change and Advancement, our distinguished speaker, Professor Dr. Samsul bin Draman, from Kuliah of Medicine, Professor Dr. Kamar Zaman bin Yunus, Campus Director, IIUM Kuantan, our moderator for today, members of University Management Committee, deans and directors, staff and students of IIUM, viewers on our IIUM official YouTube, brothers and sisters, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and salam Ramadan Karim. Welcome to the IIUM Urabi in Action Talk number two, featuring Professor Dr. Samsul bin Draman from Kuliah of Medicine. What is Murabi in the Action Talk is actually about? The talk is a platform for all IIUM community to share their efforts and experience in implementing Sejahtera Academic Framework SAF. I am Muhammad Khairul Azam bin Muhammad Junid, third year Kuliah of Islamic River Knowledge and Human Sciences student, and I am honored to be the MC for today. So let us begin with the recitation of Surah Al Fatiha. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي بنعمته تتم الصالحات والصلاة والسلام على رسولنا الأمين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم إنا نسألك رضاك والجنة ونعوذ بك من صحتك والنار اللهم إنك عفو كريم تهب العفو فعف عنا وعن والدينا وعن جميع المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات برحمةك يا أرحم الراحمين يا فعل لما يريد يا الله Ya Allah, we ask you for the safety of our religion and the welfare of our body. O oh Allah, Lord of the implementing authority, make the day that we have gone through, starting with your mercy, continue with your blessing and end it with your forgiveness. And also make the day that we have gone through with guidance and end with the victory of Aslan. Ya Allah, Ya Muhaymin, Ya Aziz, Ya Jabbar, let our efforts as a means to enlighten and convince ourselves that the personal safety of either outer or inner is a prerequisite for achieving happiness and excellence in various fields. O oh Allah, grant us faith and strength in order to face the challenges of life. Ya Allah, ya farij alham wa ya kashif al -gham. Ya Allah, show us guidance and adjust our paths and ways to achieve happiness and glory. Let us listen to people who like good things. Let us avoid doing the bad and evil things. O oh Allah, bless our life in this meeting and gathering and prevent us from harm and unfortunate event. Rabbana alayka tawakkalna wa ilayka anabna wa ilayka al-masir. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa kina azab al-nar. Wa sallallahu ala sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Amin ya Rabbal Alamin. It is my pleasure uh, to invite uh, Director of International Islamic University Malaysia, Emeritus Professor Tan Sri Zulkifli Abdul Razak to give his welcoming remark. Please welcome Tan Sri. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Wassalatu wassalam syafil ambiya musalin wa ala alihi wa sahbi ajma'in. La hawla wa la kuwaita illa billah. Saudara Khairul Azam, uh, our distinguished speaker, Professor Samsul, uh, Professor Kamal, Kamal Zaman Yunus, uh, 
Dr. Lihana, brothers and sisters. Uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh. Indeed, it is an honor uh, for me to give a, a small sort of introduction uh, to this particular session of um, Murabi in Action. I really like this uh, topic, Murabi in Action, uh, because I think we, 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 we are not only uh, contented with talking heads, but we also want walking legs. In other words, whatever we preach, we want to demonstrate. And I think there is no better person to do this than Professor Samsul. Uh, I happen to know him uh, not on uh, not on the plan kind of a uh, program. I remember I was the call to officiate a program that has to do with quote unquote matnya. Uh, I didn't understand what matnya was until I met him. And I met this group of 150 people who are human beings, but perhaps slightly different from what we know who they, who they are or who they were in this particular context. Yeah. Uh, I am very enriched by the uh, meeting that I had on that particular occasion and continue to be enriched and being uh, pretty thought. Uh, a lot of new things that we normally take for granted when we deal with issues of this nature which is very complicated and I think very few of us understand but yet volunteered to make a lot of comments in social medias and things like that uh, without understanding the, the, the proper issue. And hence I think recently I wrote an, an article under URM Berhujah, uh, Di Mana Saudara Sajat. Yeah. Uh, in that which I thought we have missed the, the, the very point that whoever we are dealing with, we are dealing first of all with a human person. And somehow or other, that human person becomes second when the issue of gender takes a precedence over the whole person and therefore we lose the, the entire argument. And in fact, in this case, we almost lose the person uh, himself. Right. So I am very excited to listen to Professor Samsul. Not only he's an academician, but he devoted a lot of time uh, in ensuring that this issue of gender dysphoria is well articulated, well framed, and well also conveyed to the people around. It is not an easy task when the stereotypes have been very strong on this group of people. I think we are trying to engage these people to get an alternative view. There's no right and wrong uh, answers to this, but there must be an alternative view that brings us to a kind of a moderate path a middle path, as it were, to find a solution, not the way the West looks at it, but the way Islam looks at it. So uh, this uh, moment, I think, is, is a moment of recognition as far as I'm concerned. And I would like to thank uh, Prof. Uh, Samsul and his colleague who have been working, I think, for more than 10 years, if I'm not mistaken. And we are now trying to get this into the new SAF you know, platform in trying to introduce uh, a free elective maybe, so that people who wants to work with the transgender or the matnya uh, are involved in a very informed way, not because you are there for some interest. That may be important, but the interest must be informed. There must be knowledge based to it. Uh, there must be a way of uh, approaching the, the, the issue uh, in a way that it does not hurt people but bring people together at the end of the day. And this is what I think IIUM is all about. We are trying to bridge as many people as possible in our notion of Rahmatan Lil Alamin, which is beyond people, including animals at the same time. And how do you do this? And therefore, this Murabi in action is something that I hope will add on uh, to our views of what we need to do as Muslims, as good Muslims. And in this month of Ramadan, uh, I hope the more blessing uh, we will get from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on a sincere notion and a sincere intention of trying to grasp and grapple with some of this difficult issue that is surrounding us today. So let me wish you well, uh, Prof. Samsul, and I would, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Lihana again and of certainly uh, Campus Kuantan uh, for leading this uh, this uh, project, which is uh, we want to term it first in the world, and we hope we will be able to demonstrate that very soon, and hopefully this will be another way of influencing uh, the world uh, how we can look at 
problems from a different perspective, giving better solutions and also a better enlightenment, inshallah. So on that note, thank you very much. Uh, uh, Ramadan uh, Mubarak to all. And uh, I wish you well. Wa bilahi taufiq wa hidayah. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Thank you. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, Tan Sri. Thank you, Tan Sri, uh, for very inspiring speech. Then uh, I will now hand over the session to the moderator for today, Professor Dr. Kamar Zaman Yunus, Campus Director, IUM Kuantan. Okay, terima kasih, Brother Muhammad Khairul Lajam. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. Wassalatu wassalamu ala asrifal ambiya wal musalin. Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Yang berbahagia Tan Sri Rektor The Deputy Rektors uh, UMC Members Deans and Directors Our Invited Speakers Prof. Dr. Samsud Daraman And not to forget Dr. Liana Michael Lee, all staff and students Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And a very good morning And first and foremost let me express our my gratitude to Allah SWT giving the good health and a time to be here in the Morabi Asian Siri talk number two. And Alhamdulillah, in a short time, we are going to listen today on the very interesting and hot current issues uh, with the topic of the gender dysphoria. Sejahtera academic framework is the solution for KO. And the topic today is to be presented by our specialist in family medicine. Prof. Dr. Samsul Draman. Okay, on the uh, very little bit introduction on the our speaker today, Prof. Dr. Samsul Draman started his training at the UC Malaya in 1997 and went to the UC Science Malaysia in the year of 2000 for his postgraduate program. And he joined the uh, IIUM in the year of 2005 as a specialist in family medicine in the Kula of Medicine. And currently, he's a, a deputy campus director and taking charge on the academic support services. And he's also the champion of the gender dysphoria flagship project of the IIUM. And brother and sister, I'm not going to waste my time to listen to me, but only to listen on the hot topic on the gender dysphoria. Okay, from Samsul. Uh, I was told to allow you only one hour, 30 minutes for the presentation and to open for the last 30 minutes for the Q&A. And, and the question can be asked in live or the participants are also allowed to ask any question through the uh, chat board, which I will read the, the question. Okay, Professor, the floor is yours, please. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. <clears throat> uh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, thank you, Prof. Kamru Zaman, as our moderator today. Uh, Brother Harold, as our MC, Tan Sri Tuzul, Alhamdulillah, thank you very much, Tan Sri. Uh, Dr. Lihana, uh, all the Deputy Rectors, Dean, uh, Deputy Dean, Lecturers, Brother and Sister. Uh, this session is uh, basically, is not to teach you all. Uh, this session basically just to share my experience dealing with this community. And I would like to thanks uh, to Dr. Liana for giving me uh, this opportunity so that people understand uh, the gender dysphoria from medical as well as Islamic perspective. So I would like uh, to share screen. Okay, Prof. Okay, okay, very clear. Go ahead. Okay. So this topic, uh, gender dysphoria, Self is the solution for cure. So we are going uh, to discuss uh, a few objectives, uh, introduction, uh, risk factors, uh, what are the impact gender dysphoria to health, economy, social, and how are we going to help them? What are the achievements so far? What are the preventions and what are the conclusions? Okay. This uh, gender dysphoria is not only confined to our country, it is a universal problem. In Malaysia, we call them as matnya. Uh, if you call them as sotong, bapu, pondan, that means we insulting them. We are downgrading them. 
So if we have a uh, little respect, we use maknya. This is the proper words. Eh? Indonesia, they call waria, uh, wanita plus pria. They also call banci, bencong. In Philippines, they have special word. There are many words, but the one that rele uh, relevant to Malaysia is bantut. Bantut basically is uh, retarded in Malaysia. Thailand, they call kata. In India or Pakistan, they call hijra. Middle East, they call zenis. In Kuantan, Bahar, we have a zenis hotel. I don't know either this is related to us or not. So, in medical term, we use transgender. Uh, transgender defined as people who have a gender identity or gender expression that differ from their assigned sex. So this is his gender. So this is me. The person behind me is transgender, male to female. So in quantum, we focus more to male to female rather than female to male because male to female more common. Another terminology, transsexual. Uh, transsexual, they need medical assistance to transition from one sex to another. So they need hormone, they need surgery like breast implant or nose implant, or they need a penectomy to remove the penis. So this is transsexual from Thailand. And his name is Shukur. So transsexual is transgender, uh, but transgender doesn't mean transsexual. Another terminology is transvestite. Transvestite is the practice of cross-dressing. Daytime, they can be just normal people like me, but nighttime, I will practice cross-dressing. Another terminology, transsexual. Is it transnational? Uh, this one also common. This one involves exchange of sex for goods or services. Uh, this one also common among our students. They say if they want free right, uh, they offer sex. Uh, that's why they call transsexual, free right. Okay, brother and sister, this photo with their permission. These people, they are ex-gay. You see, a few are very sado, very muscular. This is our adolescence. A few of them reaching almost 40 plus, but they prefer to be gay. So this is a great loss to nation, very great loss, not only to our nation, even to our women. If we can save one gay here, at least we can have, we can save four women. But the problem is we have difficulty to identify gay. Gay, very tough and very difficult to identify until we live with them, then we know the status. So to make things easier, we catch transgender because transgender is recognized gay. Gay that easily to be identified. How to identify transgender? It's very easy. I'm sure you can identify here between the real and artificial. Basically the tudung. So tudung is not only important to cover our aurat, tudung also to differentiate between real and artificial. I'm sure you can identify that this is artificial, the maknya, this is our student. But the problem now, maknya also apply tudung. So this is the issue now. The moment they open more, then you know this is maknya. Uh, this is nilofa, nilofa of maknya version. Uh, he prefer to have to don because he feel very secure. So if our women don't appear to don something wrong with them. And now maknya not only with to don, they also have makeup. So when they have makeup, they look more beautiful than our women. The moment you give second look, third look or fourth look, uh, maybe this maknya have what we call susu. Uh, so this will make them more beautiful than others. So be careful. So brother and sister, this is historical evolution of LGBT. In all this, they use drunken. Drunken full of negative connotation. So they make it more less, less uh, negative. So they, they, make, as they use the word alcohol. Then sodomy, they use homosexuality. And then in 1973, homosexuality removed in DSM-2. DSM stands for Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorder. This is basically Kitab Perwatan. Uh, by American Psychiatric Association, they changed to sexual orientation disturbance. And in, 19, in 1980, DSM-3 
change to gender identity disorder. Whereas in 1990, now WHO, WHO through international classification of disease, they also remove homosexuality. And 2011, our gender dysphoria was set up. We set up because we noticed this issue getting serious and serious and getting bigger and bigger. And one year later, in 2012, World Professional Association for Transgender Health treatments aim at changing gender identity or expression are no longer considered ethical. So what we do in Kuantan consider as unethical and dangerous. This is their, perspe uh, their perception. In 2013, DSM-5, now DSM-5 from DSM-2, now DSM-5, gender identity replaced with gender dysphoria. Now, today we use gender dysphoria. The problem with DSM-5, they also include KUNSA or intersex, part of gender dysphoria. Basically, this is wrong. This is unacceptable because KUNSA is chromosomal disorder. KUNSA is organic problem, organic issue. Whereas gender dysphoria is spiritual disorder. It's totally different. So in 2014, Yogyakarta principle, this one released in Indonesia, you know, Indonesia is a Muslim country. So they released one statement, LGBT rights are human rights. And then 2018, again, WHO, transgender is not a mental illness. This year, February 5, new US president, Joe Biden, his statement effort to protect LGBT rights globally. So you see it's getting bigger and bigger and getting serious and serious. This is part of their normalization for LGBT. Brother and sister, in 2017, this father, this father, Khalid, 41 years old, used Caesar to remove just part of the clitoris for his daughter. In Malaysia, this is acceptable. This is what the parents will do because this is female circumcision. But what happened in USA, he was serving 10 years in prison just because of that procedure. And on top of that, after completed 10 years in prison, he was deported to Ethiopia. So you see the difference how they treat the Muslim. However, however, sex reassignment surgery. Let's say if the LGBT remove the penis, not only part, the whole thing, the whole thing they remove, this is acceptable because this is human right. Uh, so when it come to human right, okay, no problem. But when it come to Muslim community want to practice their faith, this is wrong. So this is our dilemma nowadays. International Lesbian Gay Association, ILGA 2017, country where same-sex activity is illegal. Majority of Muslim country against this. Muslim country, they, they basically disagree. Whereas non-Muslim country agree. This is understood. But if you, if you check the Muslim country, Iran, for example, the president passed a fatwa in 1986, gender reassignment surgery and hormone replacement therapy religiously acceptable medical procedure. Iran also give trans citizens the right to have their gender identity recognized by the law. And they not only allow sex reassignment, but they also subsidize the operation. And in 2008, the BBC reported that Iran was second only to Thailand in the number of sex change operation performed. Why Iran? Because Iran is special. Iran using Mazahab Shia. That's why when we talk about Shia, we must be very careful because these people, they are very smart. And then Pakistan. Pakistan also passed historic transgender right bill. Their ulama have issued a religious decree declaring that transgender people have full marriage, inheritance, and funeral right under Islamic law. However, this organization is not a political party, so its fatwa are not legally binding. How about our country, Malaysia? So for Malaysia, we also unique. US Secretary of State John Kerry present 2016 International Women of Courage Award. So this is Nisha Ayub, the transgender right 
the transgender activists. He also, he always championed this issue. So American recognize his effort. So indirectly they are teasing, they are, I don't know either insulting or not to Malaysia. Ramadan and LGBT. This guy, he said, kenapa kami anjur big gay iftar? This is Numan Afifi, President Pelangi Campaign. This one, Ramadan 2017. So he said, uh, he, this program was uh, organized just to, you know, to unify the community from the various background so that they can uh, breakfast together and they can have dialogue on Kasih Sayang, supaya Kasih Sayang dapat disebarkan. And this program also to remember about 49 LGBT community that was died because of the uh, terrorism in Orlando, Florida in 2016. Another article, Time for Malaysia to Embrace LGBT Community, Bahtia Talha. This one released in, on 17 May 2020, Ramadan last year. Who is Bahtia Talha? This guy basically uh, was the ex-president of Malaysian AIDS Council. So it's quite odd and funny when Malaysian AIDS Council embrace or encourage people to accept LGBT. And at the same time, they are talking about combating AIDS. So this is quite odd and funny. And then he said, despite the inhuman way my country, Malaysia, treats its LGBT population, I proudly and openly count myself as an LGBT Malaysian. I'm a Malay Bumiputra who attended the elite Malay College Kuala Kansa, the school that produced some of the best Malaysian leader, intellectual and professional who served this country. So brother and sister, he is very educated, but you see the value. And he say, I see LGBT Malaysian everywhere, healthcare professionals at the front lines, corporate leader, social activists, educationists, legal practitioner, artist, chef, entrepreneur, grab leader, and the list goes on. That's why brother and sister, this is very serious issue. We are afraid maybe our student will continue the list or increase the statistic. And I'm not holding my breath for Malaysia to treat me as an equal, but today I choose to be unafraid to live openly as a proud gay Malaysian. Now people, they, are, they have no more shame. They can openly declare themselves as a gay. And May 17 marks the International Day Against Homophobia. So we are considered as homophobia transphobia, biphobia. We are the majority, but now we become as if we are minority. And then May 17 uh, was chosen because it commemorates the World Health Organization decision in 1990 to declassify homosexuality as a mental disorder. This is another interesting article. Federal Court unanimously declare Selangor Sharia law criminalizing unnatural sex void unconstitutional. This is 25 February this year. So this is kiamat, brother and sister. This is kiamat for us, but I don't want to comment further. Okay. Now we go to objective two. What are the risk factors? Gender dysphoria defined by DSM-5, a marks incongruent between one's experience expressed gender and assigned gender of at least six month duration as manifested by at least two of the following. So you see here, brother and sister, number one, as I already mentioned, number two, a strong desire to be rid of one primary and or secondary sex characteristic. Number three, a strong desire for the primary and or secondary sex characteristic. Number four, also a strong desire to be of the other gender. Number five, also a strong desire to be treated as the other gender. And the last one, a strong conviction that one has the typical feeling and reaction of the other gender. This is what they said from the gender dysphoria from DSM-5. But what Al-Quran say about this? Al-Quran mentioned, do you indeed approach men with desire? So Al-Quran already mentioned about desire 1,400 years ago. So we are so much advanced. Al-Quran already said the risk factor, basically, the cause basically is just desire instead of woman. 
rather you are a people behaving ignorantly so akran mentioned these people they are ignorant they are stupid so if they choose to be a gbt that's mean they are stupid they are ignorant this is not my word this is akran and then but you know western they have they have problem to accept other people opinion and they said factor that leads to transgenderism remain controversial and there are so many study mention about genetic and this study favor that the the cause was genetic this is another study genetic study genetic factor account for 70% of the variant in gender atypical behavior for both boy and girls and that this phenomenon was substantially linked to homosexuality so they they think genetic to homosexuality and another study evidence that genes influence sexual orientation and this study they mentioned about endocrine endocrine also during embryonic life often result in increased incidence of homosexuality however brother and sister article 29 august 2019 this study mentioned no gay gene uh, so basically this study managed to wipe out all the the previous study that mentioned that lgbt because of genetic now the western no more use genetic as the reason because they they learn from this study but however lgbt in malaysia they still claim genetic is one of the reason so if you hear of you or you listen that someone said this is genetic that's mean that's guy may be from malaysia because malaysia we are very slow in updating our knowledge so another study now they start thinking of intrinsic failure in conquering in inbuilt sexual desire unbalanced sex emotion history of infant sex experience childhood sex abuse whereas extrinsic may be peer influence distancing oneself from religion and religious literature this study 2014 but actually iium we are very advanced 2005 our researcher in 2005 already identify the causes of gender dysphoria among them parental rejection uh, parents wants a baby girl suddenly they got baby boy so they raise this baby boy as baby girl or expressions of transgenderism a feminine boy may end up being transgender because of external stimuli peer pressure or reversal in parental role over protective mother father too busy father busy with locum for example busy with private hospital so the boy more close to the mother or the boy more close to the sister and the most important things in malaysia context lack of religious education this is very much important okay this study this is uh, this study joint venture with uh, university of science islam malaysia transgenderism identifying underlying cause assessing hiv risk behavior and religious and approach as tool for dawa and health intervention This is qualitative study about 10 sample, 10 smanya. You can see here their occupation majority are sex workers, majority are sex workers. And level of education, you see here just completed primary school, age 33 years old. No formal education, just 62. The rest majority were SPM holder. But this guy 24 years old, just completed primary school. this why they end up being sex workers because the background the education background is very poor and you see the family environment perception of love and affection in family during childhood lacking from both parents and relative no affection basically very little the second one also lacking the third one third sample they have he got appropriate love and affection but the problem is three biological cousin are transgender so the family members also lgbt you see that's why they contribute to the issue again lacking lacking in term of affection this guy appropriate in term of love and affection but one of his sister is pankit three or four relative are transgender that's why they they try to relate to genetic actually it's nothing to do with genetic it's more toward the environment the family environment lacking of father about this one nothing but basically lacking lacking of love so what we concern what we afraid in future malaysia men sex men they will have adopted children 
they won't have their own family, but they will have adopted children. And in Kuantan, it's already happened. The father is gay and the mother is transgender. So if this boy become gay or become transgender, you cannot blame him. We cannot blame him at all because right from the beginning, the environment is very strong for LGBT. That's why, brother and sister, this is very serious matter because in Kuantan, we have, so far, we have identified two family, gay parents. I'm sure in Kuala Lumpur, even, even more. So another, another factor, another causative factor, peer pressure. This guy, 28 years old, bekas ketua pengawas, very excellent in SPM, and went to Dublin in 2003 for medicine. However, he end up he end up for gay marriage. Uh, we don't know what happened actually. It doesn't mean when anybody go to overseas they will end up being gay. But this case is very special because the family has to go up and down to island just to meet this guy. But he they they cannot. But suddenly he end up being a uh, doing gay marriage. So it's quite a sad story. Very educated, but the problem is the the outcome. And another guy, the previous slide, medical student. This is medical assistant, our MA. He bid to carry a woman's name, Alicia Farhana Abdul Aziz, in the identity card. And the problem started. He exhibited female mannerism and was more inclined to socialize with girls since he was in school. Again, in school. We don't know what happened in school, maybe the peer pressure, maybe the environment. That's why, brother and sister, we need to know who our kid be friend with either, they say, Claudia, Kawan, all the girls, girl, we need to worry as a parent. Or all the boys, girl, we, we also need to worry because all boys, we end up, the, the kid end up being gay. Hopefully not. Nah. This is transgender, sorry, this is intersex, uh, this is Kunsa. Kunsa, you know, the, the genitalia, they have both, both sex, boy and girl. And that's why they put this uh, intersex as part of gender dysphoria. But kalau looking at this issue, actually it is not related because LGBT, they were born normal. They have no problem at all. But intersex, they have both, they having a congenital disorder or chromosomal disorder. That's why in Islam, they give solution. If you have this type of problem, you can go for surgery or you can opt for hormone. Even this type of case will get early medical attention. So this is not a big issue. But the problem is matnya, transgender. Because Majlis Fatwa, uh, Muzakara Jawatan Kuasa Fatwa Majlis Kebangsaan already uh, released the fatwa that any sexual reassignment surgery is haram for this community. It is not allowed because they have nothing to do with intersex. Okay. So how many transgender so far in Malaysia? In 2018, this data 2018, Malaysia so far, we have 15,000 transgender and 22,000 female sex workers. Top the list. Top the list, Kuala Lumpur, 2,000, followed by Penang, 1,900. And then we have Selangor, 1,600. Then we have Johor, 1,500. Sarawak, 1,500. And that's Pahang, 1,100. So brother and sister, this is our responsibility. We need to think this seriously. How can we reduce the statistic? Whereas MSM, men, sex men, okay. Part one, using social media. Part two, not using social media. So far, we have 221,000 gay in Malaysia in 2018. Top the list, Kuala Lumpur, 50,000. So Kuala Lumpur, 50,000 gay using social media. Not using 3,000 social, 3, social media. Second, Selangor, 39,000. Johor, 12,000. Sabah, 11. And you see here this article, Aplikasi Sosial Janji Temu Sex Active di Malaysia. So this is what we worried, brother and sister. And you see here, 2017, Kuala Lumpur HIV prevalence among MSM. Kuala Lumpur top 43.3%. Kuala Lumpur top 
Kuala Lumpur beat Indonesia, beat China, beat Myanmar, beat Thailand, beat Vietnam. So we were the champion, Tan Sri. So this is not a good data for us. This is for homosexual. If you see heterosexual, even worse. Sex and teen, what is going on in Malaysia? This data 2017 by Ministry of Health among survey 13 to 17 years old, 13 to 17 years old, our children. The prevalence having sex, 7.3%. They already had the experience before marriage. Prevalence of having sex by state, highest, Pahang, 9.5%. Kuala Lumpur, homosexual, Pahang, heterosexual. And Kuala Lumpur, the lowest for heterosexual, 4.3%. And if you go by level, Form 1 up to Form 5, Form 1 highest, 9.3%. They have a lot of free time. They don't have major exams, so they enjoy life. Whereas Form 5, they busy with exam, SPM, so they have no time, so they less doing this, just 6.9%. So this for heterosexual, just focus on our teenagers. Why? Because you see, bahan ducha, pornographic material, exposed to pornographic material, 35.3%. And majority, uh, I mean 13 to 17 years old, 30%. 18 to 24 years old, 42%. And the source coming from internet, 60.8%. Telephone, 35%. Video, 20%. Printed material, 10%. Oh, so brother and sister, Tan Sri. So this is the beauty of COVID. Beauty of COVID. In Kuantan, basically 100% close shut down, no activity. And you see 70% entertainment center, Gulong Tika collapsed because of COVID. But the problem now, you see Malaysia and Pornhub, we, are, we were number four globally to have visited Pornhub website during the movement control order last year. And before COVID, we were number 19 and approximately 22,000 search daily porn MD, MD website. So this is another big issue that we need to think of. We need to find how we can strategize so that we can reduce the statistic. Okay, gay and lesbian alliance against defamation. So far, over 10% of TV series regulars are LGBTQ. And what we worried they want to reach 20% by 2025. At a time when the cultural climate is growing increasingly divisive, increased representation of LGBTQ story and character on television is especially critical to advance LGBTQ acceptance. So brother and sister, TV like uh, Bad Woman, Billion, demonstrate that not only are LGBTQ story and character on TV, but that we were everywhere continue to respond with extreme positivity. So this is part of their strategy to normalize LGBT in community. So the third objective, what are the impacts gender dysphoria to help? So far from this study, this group HIV AIDS among transgender, they are vulnerable almost 50 times, 49 times. And Sheikh Dr. Yusuf al Kardawi quote the prophet hadith in which the Prophet وسلم, said, when fahisha, adultery, or fornication appear or is publicly done in the society, then Allah SWT tests such community with cholera and pain of diseases that were not known previously. So you may ask, what has cholera got to do with adultery or fornication? Because in modern days, this is not related. But if you see this, uh, this table, clinical manifestation of acute HIV infection, one of the features of HIV is diarrhea. So our prophet actually referring this uh, cholera to HIV. So you see the nakli and akli here. And no come close to adultery, for is it a shameful deed and evil? opening the road to other evil. So when we study opening the road to other evil, what is it? So this one actually basically HIV. So this is global data 2018, 6% HIV coming from sex workers, female sex workers, 12% coming from the intravenous drug user. 
70% men who have sex with men, 1% from transgender, 18% client of sex workers and sex partner of other key population. So basically majority is related to sex, sexual activity. And USA, you can see here, this is very old study, 2009. White men sex men, 11,000. Black men sex men, 10,000. Hispanic, Latino, MSN, 6,000. Then you have heterosexual. Heterosexual means men and women. So the first three, all gay, all MSM. Same thing to see, please, top the list, MSM, 6,000. Then heterosexual. Even this study, even though uh, 2014, but it's still relevant. 2009, 2014, same data. Gay and bisexual men remain most affected, 70%. 70%. And if we see here, Philippines has highest HIV infection growth rate in Asia Pacific. This one from United Nations in 2017. So brother and sister, in Malaysia, the key population so far from 15,000 in 2018, 2020 so far, the population size estimate 37,000 transgender, MSM 220,000. HIV prevalence common among MSM group because we have problem to identify gay. Transgender is quite easy so that intervention can be given earlier. No, their HIV status, 43.3%. Treatment coverage, just 62%. Condom use last sex, just 65% for MSM and transgender for 83%. So this data is very interesting, very important. If you have one sexual partner, you expose disease to one people. If you have three sexual partner, you expose disease to seven people. If you have five sexual partner, you expose HIV to 31 people. Brother and sister, they say if you have 20 sexual partner, multiple sexual partner, you will expose HIV to more than 1 million people. That's why this is very serious matter. The moment uh, our adolescent engage with these sex workers, they are vulnerable for HIV. And this data from Ministry of Health, receptive anal intercourse, let's say the bottom, they did what? Sodomized by somebody. Chances for getting HIV per 10,000 exposure, 138. Receptive penile vaginal intercourse, let's say husband and wife, the wife, chances for HIV, just eight. You see, the moment you against the fitra, you don't follow the fitra, Chances for you to get HIV higher, 138. Whereas insertive anal intercourse, you insert, top, you insert. Chances just 11. Whereas insertive penile vaginal intercourse, the husband insert just four. You see the difference from the statistic? Why, how, how do you explain this? Because rectum, rectum the dubor is lined by columna epithelium, with gland. So this tissue is very soft, very thin. It is easily broken, easily torn. That's why HIV easily penetrate into the tissue and you got HIV. Whereas vagina is lined by stratified squamous epithelium. It is very thick, very elastic. That's why because of the elasticity, the vagina can expand up to 10 centimeters for childbirth, for child delivery. So this is the beauty of the create, the, 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 the function of the tissue. I, I would like to apologize to my female colleague. This just for academic is nothing to do with the pornographic material. Okay. Now the changing trend of HIV transmission mode from 2000 to 2015. As you can see here, the red line here is reducing trend for intravenous drug user. So from 2000, 2015, intravenous drug user is no more the main player, the key player. But the key player, if you see 2015, the key player now was sexual activity. But we don't know. This sexual either homosex or heterosex. 
So this chart will give you detail, the detail of it. So 2015, the sexual activity actually for heterosexual, just 20%. But you see the red color, the homosexual is about 60%. And in 2016, the red color more than 16%. 2017, even higher, even higher. And if we go to 2018 data, 57% HIV coming from MSM group, whereas 37% coming from heterosexual group. 2010, homosexual just 8%. But IVDU, intravenous drug user, 48%. 1990, homosexual is zero. It's non-issue. But 2018 is a big issue. 2019, 2019, as you can see here, intravenous drug user almost disappeared. Ministry of Health has done a good job. They managed to fight all out against intravenous drug user. But now the challenge, the new challenge now coming from the sexual activity. You see the red color is the heterosexual group, husband and wife, for example. Whereas the green color coming from the LGBT group, homosexual. So you see the green color is increasing trend 2019. And future study, Ministry of Health, they also have future study. In 2030, you can see here the red color here coming from MSM is increasing trend. Whereas the intravenous that user reducing trend. So this is our dilemma, brother and sister. This is our challenge. How are we going to overcome this issue? So Alhamdulillah, we have this Murabi session so that we can discuss and we can do something after this. And national, national strategic plan for ending AIDS. This is what we plan at the national level. You see, Malaysia has always committed on ending AIDS by year 2030 as stated in the 2016 United Nations. So United Nations, they set a target for Malaysia. Okay, Malaysia, listen carefully. By 2030, AIDS must be disappear, must be finished, inshallah. This is what United Nations supposed to Malaysia in 2016. But you see this slide. You see this slide. New STEM promoting LGBT equality worldwide unveil at United Nations. This stem released in 2016. So this is very odd and very funny. How come United Nations, you told Malaysia, HIV can finish by 2013 and suggested in 2016, but at the same time, United Nations release new stem. So indirectly, United Nations actually promoting LGBT lifestyle. So this is quite odd and quite funny. It's just like the tobacco company launch the anti-smoking campaign. So for sure there is no impact. Okay. And WHO through ICD-11 remove gender incongruent from. So being transgender is not a mental illness anymore, but gaming disorder as a mental health condition. Country progress report, this one 2018, this one by age group. So brother and sister, as you can see here, age 13 to 29 years old is increasing trend. This is our undergrad student, 13 to 29, increasing. This is this data 2017, you see, higher than 2016. Whereas the green color, 30 to 49, this one maybe, maybe our staff, uh, maybe our staff, hopefully nobody involved. Uh, but the age group represent 13 to 29 represent our student 30 to 49 maybe represent our staff and 2017 this is detail of 2017 data homosexual 50.7 percent homosexual this group 1697 so they represent 50.7 percent heterosexual 39.8 percent whereas the age group 13 to 29 46.6 percent and 30 to 39, 32.8%. And this data, 2019, 20, 2019, age 20 to 29, 45%, 30 to 39, 70%. So more than 70% of new HIV infection were among people age 20 to 39 years. So brother and sister, this is very dangerous. This is great loss to our country, Malaysia. Okay, 
gender dysphoria impact to mental prevalence of depressions in Kuantan. This study done by our, our student, undergrad student, in 2012, the, uh, the prevalence was 35%. And 2014, 47.4%. This data are very significant, very important because if you have depression, most likely you will have poor compliance. You won't take the medication, you won't use condom. So this is the issue here. And then the risk of domestic violence in a male-to-male -male homosexual relationship is at least 80 times greater. And homosexual and bisexual are two times getting schizophrenia, lesbian and bisexual three times vulnerable for substance abuse, bisexual are three times to committing suicide compared to heterosexual. And in Canada, suicide attempt among LGBT are two to 10 times higher than heterosexual. Belanda is the first country in the world to legalize same sex marriage. Homosexual are 10 times higher risk to hurt themselves while attempting suicide and Sweden homo are three times higher than hetero to commit suicide. An impact to social Costa Rica first in Central America to legalize same-sex marriage. And London, right, we spread. This is how the marketing, how they do the, I mean, publicity to normalize LGBT. Thailand, Thailand, they have almost every, every year Miss Gay. This is our professor, uh, our ex-campus director, Prof. Kamar Zaman Wansu. He was also a part of my team. And when we were in Chiang Mai, Thailand, uh, he was is one of the one, two, to do the dakwah for the transgender in Chiang Mai. Okay. And Thailand could become the first Southeast Asian country to legalize same-sex civil partnership. The cabinet say, they will approve a draft bill that will legally recognize same-sex civil partnership and give greater rights to same-sex couple, a potential first for any nation in Southeast Asia if passed into law. And then the spokesperson said it was a milestone for Thai society in promoting equality among peoples of all gender. How about impact to social? In 2002 study, 92% of the respondents had received payment for sex, even though only 54% claims they were sex workers. So transgender basically, they were low social status and forced to work as sex workers due to the rampant discrimination while seeking employment. This data is very crowded, just focus on the social issue. So ever being paid for any sex in the last 12 months, 34%. So gay basically, they have steady job. That's why just 30%. However, for transgender, as you can see here, 80% receive payment for sex. That means transgender majority, almost more than 80%, they were sex workers. And use psychotropic drug before sex, average about 20%. This one not available. Consume alcohol before sex, again, 30%. But you see for transgender, uh, transgender psychotropic drug before sex, about 20% average alcohol about 30% average. Why I highlight this matter? This matter, the moment you use synthetic drug or you have alcohol, that means you won't use condom because you were drunken or intoxicated. That's why brother and sister, when Ministry of Health offer condom, actually they must check the evaluation of this, the effectiveness of condom because they, these people, they won't use it because they were intoxicated because of the synthetic drug and alcohol. Impact gender dysphoria to economy. This is very important to our finance, to our development. 2012, Ministry of Health spent 181 million for HIV AIDS. 2013, 185 million. And for research, zero, no budget for research. 2014, 195 million. You see increasing trend. 2015, 202 million and 95% coming from taxpayer money, our money. This money, if we give to our student, they can skip PTPTN. If we give finance, finance can do magic, can give every application from every kuliah. 2016, our government spent 221 million. Can you imagine, brother and sister? And 2017 dropped to 144 million because the government used, because there is price reduction for the medication. 
and 2018 drop further 19 million but it's still high still high and you see here 2018 we use 90 million and 75 percent goes to tests and treatment whereas for prevention just eight percent but we should focus more on prevention because prevention better than cure however our government they they want to follow target set by the United Nations, 90, 90, 90%. So, so far, uh, people living with HIV, this, this one stands for people live with HIV, who know their HIV status, 89%. They know their status, 89%. Target should be 90%. And so far, 57% on treatment. Target should be 90%. So, we are still lacking in this area and people who are virally suppressed 85%. So far, viral target should be 90%. But when you on treatment, the virus should be suppressed. This is their objective. So our senator, our minister of religious affairs, Dr. Zulkifli, bantu LGBT kembali ke pangkal jalan. See, this is his advice to us. And our Tansi, as he mentioned just now, di mana saudara Najib? Uh, where is, oh sorry, di mana saudara Najib? Di mana saudara Sajad? Where is Sajad? Uh, this is very interesting article. I don't have time to, to go in detail, but the one, the last sentence is very interesting. Oleh itu, pada akhirnya, bukan saja penting bertanya di mana Sajad? Tetapi lebih-lebih lagi, di mana pula kita semua? Ah, uh, This is interesting. To translate, uh, it is very important to us where is Sajad, but the most important thing is where are you? Where are you all to help Sajad? So in Kuantan, we, we try to do what we can, even though this is very uh, costly and time consuming. So far, what we have done, we focus on physical treatment. Uh, we have clinic PRN basis and my clinic normally uh, on Wednesday for these people. We focus on sexual transmitted disease, HIV, as well as chronic medical illness, diabetes, hypertension, obesity. Okay, so far the global at international level, number of new HIV infection in 2018 and changed since, two, since 2010 decrease, reducing trend. So this is the beauty of the treatment. So far, it's reducing trend. It's good. Eh? And the latest technology, 2018, undetectable HIV is untransmittable and the risk is zero. So what does it mean actually? If you take treatment regularly without fail, that means the viral load will be suppressed, uh, will be suppressed up to undetectable level. So when the viral load you manage to suppress, that means if the guy have uh, sexual intercourse with the spouse, either different gender or same gender, the risk for transmission is zero. The risk for transmission is zero because the viral load you manage to suppress to undetectable level. However, this year, another major breakthrough, UK men become second person ever cure of HIV. A 40-year-old man from London is believed to have become the second person in the world to be cured of HIV. A stem cell treatment he underwent for cancer also cured him of HIV. Uh, this one just had killed two birds with one stone. So this is according to study published in medical journal The Lancet. So however, the high-risk stem cell treatment is aggressive and was primarily used to treat the patient cancer, not their HIV. So the stem cell basically aiming for cancer, not their HIV. But at the end, HIV also get the benefit. Existing HIV drug remain highly effective and enable people living with HIV to live long and healthy life. Prof. Gupta said the treatment is only used as a last resort for patients with HIV who also have life-threatening hematological malignancy. Therefore, this is not a treatment that would be offered widely to patients with HIV who are on successful antiretroviral treatment. Okay, even now they have the surgical method, uh, very advanced uh, removal of penis to redesign the new vagina. And this vagina is still functioning just like the original one. 
However, brother and sister, despite advanced physical treatment and the acceptance of the Western world towards them is towards them is reported to increase from 27% in 1996 to 61% in 2016. But they, the LGBT community, still stuck with so many problems, so many. Why? Because the treatment so far just focus on physical, just focus on HIV. The treatment didn't focus on the soul. Treatment barrage should focus on spiritual as well. That's why in Kuantan, we combine physical and spiritual treatment. So we teach them Ikra Al-Quran every Thursday. We guide them via street dawah, but because of COVID, so we modified the, the street dawah and we sponsor them for Umrah and Hajj. And we also have yearly Ibadah camp. But last year, we postponed because of the COVID. And this is our student. Every two months, we will go for street dawah. We will meet the LGBT community, the sex workers. Sometimes the industry people also join, like MTBE Petronas. And we use the highest order of communication skill. You must talk them very polite, tactfully. You cannot be rude. You cannot be arrogant. You cannot insult them. This like basically represent the tactic of uh, communication skill, just like dolphin, very slow, very smooth. If this like, if you give to our primary care student, they won't see what we see. Uh, we are a little bit contaminated. That's why we see men and women kissing each other. But if we give to our student, primary school student particularly, they will see dolphin. Uh, you focus on the mouse, on the fin, on the tail. Uh, so this is our dolphin. So the communication skill must be very slow, very tactful, because these people, they are very sensitive, hypersensitive. So humanizing education. So when they learn communication skill in the lecture hall, uh, now when we go for street dawah, we practice, uh, we practice the communication skill. As you can see here, brother and sister, transgender, they were gossip about, they were insulted the highest compared to other key population, the highest insulted and thrown at, and also physically assaulted. That's why communication skill is very important. So this is our first Ibadah camp in 2012. And then we do it almost every year. And this were our collaborator, many university involved, uh, MOH also, Jakim, Jaib, and normally what they learn, we teach them about Fadu Ain, about Wudu, about Salat. This is the one they are lacking. They basically, they know nothing, almost negative knowledge, not zero, negative. So this is the one that we start first, Saf. Okay, other than uh, religious input, we also have game, tug of war, Maknya versus non Maknya. Our student versus transgender. Normally transgender win because they have plenty of energy, which is unused. They don't use that energy. That's why when we have, uh, I mean, either a tug of war or football, ke, normally they win. <clears throat> and our student, brother and sister, we have done this for 10 years. So we have 10 batches. So they basically our sponsor. Uh, they help us in terms of energy, in terms of money. That's where we managed to sustain, okay? And that's where we managed to do at uh, national level in 2019, okay? And normally we choose the winner based on the solat. The more they solat, the more they come for sah, the more their chance to get to be a winner, okay? And this is the most important activity. This one, we don't have to say anything, no need communication skill, just physical activity. This Mandi Jenazah really give impact to LGBT community because they have to do it from A to Z. So when they do it, they will understand that their colleagues, the Jenazah have breast implant. The penis is no more. The penis is disappeared. Sometimes we have to check either the penis still intact or not. If still intact, Alhamdulillah, at least he don't proceed to something more advanced. So this one really give impact to these people even during the burial, they will, they will do, they have to do it. Because this is part of the rehabilitation process. And we in Kuantan, we really appreciate if Kuantan campus can have, can have our own cemetery, because it's not only for gender dysphoria, it's also for our staff as well as our student. 
So brother and sister, another problem that we offer to LGBT community is Umrah and Hajj. You see, the stuff is very unique. The stuff is special, is circular, is rounded. So the impact also unique. The impact very special. So this is Haji Bakri. Uh, sorry, this is uh, Haji Bakri. Uh, this is Haji Bakri. This is Kajun. This is Kajun before he went for Umrah. He was the leader, the chef manya of content. So if you want to do any dakwah for LGBT, you catch the ibu ayam, the leader first. So this is Adi Bakri during the Umrah. Intervention started 2011 together with Jaib. And then he went for Umrah in 2013, sponsored by IIUM medical student and also public. So back from Umrah, from Ibu Ayam. You see, from Ibu Ayam, now they start selling nasi ayam until today. So this is the impact. And then he went to Hajj 2019 when we were in Kemaman doing the Ibadah camp. He, were, he was in Mekah doing Hajj and back from Umrah, back from Haji, you see brother and sister Haji Bakri, he is uneducated, just up to the primary school, but you see the value. He helped his friend to be a Muslim, from Christian to Muslim. Now his friend in Madrasa Nurul Ehsan, Kot Diang Kedah, learn about Islam. So this is Taufik. Previously, he was a Christian as a Augustine, now Taufik. And another guy, Muhammad Shawal Andrew bin Abdullah. Why Muhammad Shawal? Because he was born on first Shawal. So he used Shawal as his name. So this is another impact. We hope this Shawal still is to come out with Islam. And this guy, Amy, Amy was a matnya before, also was a sex workers in Kuantan. And then we start intervention. And in 2016, he doing Umrah sponsored by Umur Kurat University staff, Mekah. And back from Umrah, now he joined Ministry of Help as a Petugas Temusuru in KK Kuala Sungai Baru. Uh, Petugas Temusuru basically to, to, to encourage his colleague for more HIV screening so that they can curb the HIV spread. And then we plan for Hajj uh, last year, but because of COVID, so we have to uh, withhold. Okay, so what we do basically integrative medicine, modern medicine and Islamic medicine. But what Jakim do, what uh, other religious department do, they just focus on Islamic medicine, which uh, the Western state as conversion therapy or reparative therapy. But ours more toward integrative. That means we integrate uh, modern plus Islam. However, uh, homosexuality is not a mental disorder and thus there is no need for cure. So this is the American Psychological Association. So Indonesian Psychiatric Association as well as Quantan, we disagree. We said homosexuality is a mental disorder and there is a need for a cure. So what happened? The American Psychiatric Association sent a letter to Indonesian Psychiatric Association. They don't send letter to us, they send to Indonesian because they are at the same level. So in American said, we respectfully ask that you reconsider your position because the latest and best scientific research show that different sexual orientation and gender expression occur naturally and have not been shown to pose harm to society in which they are accepted as a normal variant of human sexuality. In fact, research show that effort to change individual orientation, so-called conversion therapy or reparative therapy can be harmful. Can you imagine, brother and sister, American said what we do so far, what uh, done by our critics in Jakim, Jaib, actually is harmful and are linked to depression, suicidality, anxiety, social isolation, and decreased capacity for intimacy. And even not only American, even Germany. Germany also share the same platform. They said they're going to move. Germany moved to ban gay conversion therapy. So this is our dilemma, our challenge. So we can we can impose our value. Can you imagine, brother and sister, what we are doing just to help these people, but the American, the German said, this is wrong. So we can impose our value, but the Western can. They can impose their value. You see here, I have a girl brain, but a boy body. 
this is called transgender. I was born this way. So for Western, they, they, they can do whatever they want because of human right. But when we want to do it, uh, you are not allowed to do it. So this is quite odd and quite funny. This is very unfair. So what our achievement so far? So this is Maya. Maya actually uh, is a Hafiz Quran. But because of uh, peer pressure, he ended up being transgender. And this is another transgender pancake uh, from female to male. So this, uh, this is uh, Rose Lisa, is her real name, but her nickname as a pancake Z. Uh, and this is Maya, transgender. His real name, uh, I can't remember what is the, his real name, but basically we call him Maya. Okay, then Maya, after our intervention, Maya start thinking how long should I become like this? Become like transsexual, I should stop. So he start, he start open Al-Quran and the first ayat, An-Nisa 119, Aku syaitan akan menyuruh mereka mengubah ciptaan Allah. So this is the first ayat that he saw. So this ayat is a turning point for him. So he stopped and he start new life and he got married with Rosaliza. So this is new Maya. Actually, his name is also Hafiz. We have so many Hafiz here. Uh, so now Hafiz start a new life, got married, and now he's uh, selling nasi lemak. Whereas uh, his wife, because he's a pancake, so well, he is a rapid Kuala Lumpur bus driver. Uh, so you see, Alhamdulillah, this is the achievement so far. Any depression? I don't see the depression here. They are okay, no social isolation. And then this is another guy, this is Azman, 52 years old, married to a real woman, 22 years old. Even our Kuantan community, they now give second, second chance to this uh, LGBT community to start new life. This is purple, this purple, this photo taken in 2012. And in 2013, he start to U-turn, to start a new life. Very simple, very simple intervention given by one Ustad. This Ustad said, our Prophet Muhammad Wasallam lived in Mecca and Madinah about 63 years, but he already left us more than 1,400. So which one you prefer? You want 63 or you want 1,400? Uh, so he noted that life in, in dunya is short. It's even shorter than we think. That's why he turned and he start new life. And then he, uh, he requests to be, uh, I mean the breast implant to be removed. So his breast implant removed in Sasme, 14 August uh, last year. We need to remove otherwise the risk of rupture after seven years or risk of cancer, for example, lymphoma. I really appreciate to submit. Thank you very much to my Greek, to Sophie and Pro Hafiz for giving this green light, as well as trans director. This is special permission, not to forget Prof. KY. Okay. So brother and sister, this is purple. This is purple. You see now married with two children. Any depression here? I don't think so. There is no side effect as claimed by the American, as claimed by the Germany. So now, uh, up to Purple or Muhammad Nasir, his real name is a Panoroka Felda, Felda Settler. You see from transgender, now a Panoroka Felda, Felda Settler. Okay. So this is another guy. Other than uh, removing the breast implant, uh, Sasmi also uh, removed nose implant dislodged from the nasal septum. So we have, alhamdulillah, we have a plastic surgeon plus ENT team, which is very, uh, I mean, very advanced in terms of managing LGBT community. Okay, this is our student with positive remark, non-judgmental, not one. He managed to get too much. You see, with positive remark, positive communication, normally we can catch their heart. This is Anja, this is Sandra. This is Anja without makeup. Uh, once apply makeup, brother and sister, they are very beautiful. I don't know, this is during their I mean, uh, business in Kuantan as a sex workers. But now Anja from sex workers now is our staff in Kuantan as a cleaner in Kulia of Science. 
thank you to Kudafsan for giving, for facilitating us. And then, you know, this is Mastura, the one that I showed to you just now. He also uh, working in Kuantan as cleaner. This is another guy. We managed to remove his tudung and remove his lipstick. He also working in Kuantan. And this is another guy from Thailand. When Thailand so much excited, claim they are the first nation to legalize same-sex marriage, we slowly and quietly helping their citizen. So this uh, Shukur now is a new person, now back in Thailand, in Satun, and he start a new life. This is another guy also from Thailand, Mira. Now Mira also start a new life in Golo. So brother and sister, our target so far, if possible, 100%, 100%. So far, we just managed to get 60% prostitution center in Kuantan close. So another 40% just uh, we, we need before we can achieve 100%. If, if we can go to Kuala Lumpur, this is the best because majority these people coming from Kuala Lumpur. Okay, how to prevent gender dysphoria? Introduce self at the early stage. This is the prevention. This is the most important. And we need to give advice on self all the time, even though they are not interested to listen to. And this is the most important. We need the right leader for the right post. A leader who take action, take action. Not just wait and see or just, oh, I see, no, take action. You see brother and sister in Siberia, beating addiction out of you. So they treat addiction with scanning. So the patient said, I improved that this controversial treatment works, she said, and I recommend it to anyone suffering from addiction or depression. It hurts like crazy, but it's given me back my life. Without it, I seriously believe I would now be dead. And what Al-Quran said, perempuan yang berzina dan laki-laki yang berzina, maka deralah tiap-tiap seorang dari keduanya kali rotan. So why don't you are it takes the lead? We start caning to anybody involved in LGBT community. Because Al-Quran already said here, caning. And in Kuantan, we are doing uh, Taman Insan Sejahtera, basically to honor Sejahtera Academic Framework. And this Tama Instant Sejahtera is a new platform for LGBT community to start new life. So we provide job for these people. So the right, the right side here is the LGBT people and this side the project that we offer to them. Uh, this one to plan Musang King, to, to start a new venture on Stingless Bee. We also have endangered species Ikan Kela. And this place basically we don't have electricity so far. So we use solar energy. Hopefully, gender dysphoria uh, can move forward and go higher with this new platform. Okay, in conclusion, in conclusion, brother and sister, South, as you know, uh, we in Kuantan, we cannot do this gender dysphoria alone. So we need help from Kuantan, eh, sorry, from Gomba, from Pago, from Istek. What we have done so far, just uh, integrative medicine, which is combination of uh, Islamic medicine plus modern medicine. So maybe if we can have legal input from ICOL, so this is the best, uh, because sometimes we have problem to debate with somebody from legal perspective who is pro-LGBT. So if we can have input from ICOL, this is the best. If we can have input from our colleagues in IRK, this is very wonderful. So far we have from Jakim, from Jaib. Now we open the gate. We open the gate, maybe more people can join in and we can work as a new staff, new lineup. And we need to be flexible, innovative in order to win this battle. And the most important, we need to be accountable and responsible. We cannot do this halfway and we cannot run away from this battle. So staff, gender dysphoria from staff perspective, the first staff teaching and learning for our students basically to produce graduate with soul. The second self, research and innovation. We have transdisciplinary approach. We have many colleagues from other university, basically to have more impact to community and we are not working in silo. 
The third self, we have a sponsorship from industry, from MTBE Petronas, so that this program can be sustained. And we also have a community engagement, basically for solution providers, so that there is community transformation. And the fifth one, government, the ministerial level, we have a partnership with Jakim, Yadim, Mawib, and also Ministry of Health, particularly from Palm State Health Department, RTM, Gatmara, basically for policy change. Um, sometimes if we want to change the policy, we need to go at, to the, at the top. So from top, bottom, then we can do something. And this one also as a complement national agenda. And for international collaboration and recognition, this is global issue. This is a universal problem. So we have a link in Nusantara, Indonesia, for example, Yayasan Madani, we also have Greek in Australia, in Thailand, as well as Greek in Turkey. So that easier for us to do it because we cannot do this alone because pro-LGBT, they have international support, international fund. And for sure, Akhirat, the last of Akhirat for hereafter, this is Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Sunnah Da'wah. Hopefully in Padang Mashar, we get shafa'at from him. So brother and sister, this sub total seven. So this is represent seven missions of IIUM. So that's why if we work together, inshallah, this one can be a realistic. Surah Muhammad ayat tujuh. Wahai orang-orang yang beriman, kalau kamu membela agama Allah, nescaya Allah membela kamu untuk mencapai kemenangan dan meneguhkan tapak pendirian kamu. So brother and sister, if we have Allah, Allah will help us back. Even orang hutan will come forward. Orang hutan will be flexible, innovative to help orang asli. Okay. So this is our future. This is our planning uh, to reattach the penis back to the original site, inshallah, together with our team in SASMED. If we can do this, inshallah, IIUM will be the first university in Muslim world that managed to do it. So for the one that can do it from the Western side, but if we can do, inshallah, we are the leader in this area. So never give up, never give up because hidayah is not belong to us. Our job just do it. So we just do it and we don't care about the outcome. Either it success or it fail is not our problem. Our problem, we just do it. The problem is we don't do it. Uh, so never give up brother and sister. This is the outcome. If we can do it, inshallah, this is the outcome. This is my handphone number. I'm working 24 seven. You can contact me anytime so that we can do magic for this community, inshallah. Thank you very much. Sorry for everything. Sorry for any uh, offensive remark or whatever. So I pass back to uh, Prof Kamru Zaman Yunus. Thank you very much. Yes, Prof. Okay, thank you, Prof Samsul, on your, your very interesting and informative talk. Okay, now I would like to open to any question. Is there any? I don't see any question in the chat box. Okay, let, let me start the ball roll. Okay, Prof. Samsul, uh, I just want to know, can, can you confirm us on the numbers, only the numbers, on the either staff or our students that have been diagnosed positive HIV in IAUN as a whole? Is there any numbers of our oh. staff or students? Oh, this one very, very sensitive question. Uh, <laughs> Okay, Prof. So far, what I have uh, learned, uh, staff, Alhamdulillah, nobody, uh, nobody involved or nobody indulged in this uh, immoral activity. So far, no, Prof. Huh? Nobody. But student, yes. Uh, student, yes. Uh, I have to admit this. Uh, our student involved in this activity. Maybe because of my mistake, I, I don't do enough to help these people so that they're involved. And those involved actually uh, our our brothers and uh, basically more toward gays or transgender. Our sister so far nobody. And those involved normally, if they have good insight, they admit the mistake. Uh, normally, we will invite them to join my flagship so that they can see the real LGBT. What they learn so far, what they do so far, just apa kata simple simple. 
uh, just macam uh, softy thing like that. Uh. Tapi those yang apa orang kata the real LGBT they do more than that. They remove the penis, they put the breast implant. Uh, so I I expose our student to these people so that this will give them insight. At least they learn something so that they don't proceed. And let's say if our student against against the advice, our student even against even violate the instruction after given many times repeatedly about the consequence, and they challenge. For example, they say this is my right. You don't have to interrupt. Ah, then we take action. We take action. Uh, normally, I will discuss with my dean, Prof Azmi, and I we always uh, do the best for the student and normally what we do uh, with the advice from uh, Prof Azmi, we refer this student to OLA, Office of Legal Unit and then we just, uh, we, we let the OLA to take further action. If the action is to dismiss, then we just proceed. Uh, so this is what we have so far. Number, number wise, uh, not more than 10, uh, Prof. So far, not more than 10, less than 10, less than 10. And they are, to me, they right. are good prognosis. They give a good cooperation, even though Adela one or two to a little bit recalcitrant, but still manageable, still manageable. Itulah, Prof, so far. Okay, thank you, Prof. Tamsul. Now, I have a question from, from Nuruddin Akbar. He yeah, yeah. has two questions. Let me read number one. So can you explain further the role of the feminist movement in supporting the pro-LGBT discourse globally? Okay. You can see in your chat, Prof. Ramtul. Okay. Okay, can you okay. respond to that first? Uh, this, uh, thank you to uh, Dr. Nuruddin. Uh, this question is very uh, significant because normally the pro-LGBT, they always challenge our facts and figure. They always challenge our fact and figure because uh, number one, maybe because of the ego, they couldn't accept the truth. Nah. Regardless of you give uh, the real factor, the recent factor, they still reject. Normally when we deal with uh, pro-LGBT, we don't give uh, something like young vague, no. We give very concrete evidence to tell them that we are talking based on something which is uh, concrete evidence, not from our experience, no, not from our emotion, no juga. So this is very significant because these people, they are learned community. They learn and they know, especially kalau in Malaysia ni, I have to mention her name, for example, Siti Kasim. Uh, I have to mention her name so that you know, you understand what we are talking about. Dealing with these people, you need to be very patient uh, because they are provoking you, uh, they are provoking you. If you lose your mind, for sure, you will be just like them. No? That's why we need to have concrete evidence so that they understand what we are talking about. No? And then, uh, this course. okay, that is number one. Number two, these people, as you know, as international network, they are working nonstop. Uh, they are working nonstop. That's why in Malaysia, as you can see, the trend from Mahkamah Syariah, then Mahkamah, uh, the Federal Court, they mentioned something insensitive about LGBT. And the more they give statement, the more uh, mileage to pro-LGBT movement. And even though they are minority, but they are hurt by the international platform. We are the majority, but we are just quiet. We are silenced. Uh, that's why I think we need to come forward. We need to say something. But in order to say something, you must have the facts and figure. Uh, that's why the one that I showed just now, basically from our government, Ministry of Health, you can Google, you can have that data. Even my staff is work up. Everybody can take it so that you can use as the, your, I mean, you can do this. You can continue at your place. Because I cannot do this alone. I need your help. So Dr. Nuruddin, if you need uh, my... Uh, slide ke, please, please go ahead so that you can talk nicely to pro LGBT movement. I, I hope I answer his question. Okay, the second question in relation to the use of sand. Yes, yes. Okay, uh, Prof. Samto, I have a few more questions uh, lined up in the uh, chat board. 
Uh, I may okay. open to the our participant. Any question? Maybe from Tantri. Any question from you, Tantri? Yes, thank you very much. Uh, I, I must congratulate Samsul for a wonderful exposure, at least for me. I think the one that I learned from you is just a tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more. Uh, I, I, I just wrote in the chat box, uh, are we ready to take this globally? Uh, from what I managed to sense, I think there's enough information that if we can put it together in a very academic and a very robust way, I think we probably can make a difference. The question is whether we are ready for it otherwise. Because if you go on uh, procrastinating, I think the other side will grow stronger and bigger and it's more difficult yeah, to handle yeah. them as they yeah. grow stronger and bigger. I think from the cases that you showed, uh, Purple, uh, Nasser, uh, these are enough, uh, maybe anecdotal, but enough for people to start thinking. And the, the, the good part of the Western world is that when they see data, they appreciate data. Uh, the, our side is basically yeah, yeah. They are not good in, 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 in compiling data and putting persuasive sort of uh, arguments scientifically or otherwise. I think it's time to move into the next step. You do your, your, uh, your, your, your work, but we need to start now looking at a more intellectual, academic way of convincing the world. I think we've got the case. I don't know. Uh, I, I felt that we got the case, but we need to work very hard on it. I wrote here, we, it's time for leading the way to leading the world. I think that's the next step. We've been talking about leading the way. Yeah, yeah. Now we need to lead the world. What can we do? Uh, after all, we are, we are going to endorse yours as a world first. And let's see whether there is a real world first and let's test it out. I think if we can work with Indonesia uh, as a good uh, platform to work with, uh, because they are also very strong in this particular case, so I am, I am inclined to, 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 to propose that let's look at the next step. And the way you, the way you look at SAF is something, again, that uh, amazes me. I mean, the seven, the seven SAF, like, like the seven mission, uh, it is also a very, very kind of a sophisticated way of redefining what SAF is all about, at least from the GD, the GD point of view. Uh, I take note that in, in August, we are going to organize something uh, substantial. And I hope that will be a the platform, maybe, uh, Samsul, that we change uh, the, the mindset, change the game, and move forward, inshallah. I don't know whether whether my comment makes sense to you, but if you need support, uh, I'll be there for you, inshallah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Tansri. Okay, thank uh, inshallah, you, Tansri. We, we actually are ready, ready for international approach. Because so far we have contact in Indonesia, Yayasa Madani. However, because of COVID, we have to postpone. Even we plan to invite them to join our Nusantara program uh, this 27 till 29 uh, August. August. Uh, this is another big uh, project. I think uh, Tansi also aware about this program because we, uh, the Minister Senato Dr. Zukrevi already agree uh, to join for closing ceremony. Uh, so this is another, to me, this is another platform, uh, another milestone to go higher because we have, uh, we have invited from Singapore so far, Indonesia, Thailand to join. Majority, I mean the transgender. transgender. So they will bring this idea to their home country. So hopefully this will spread slowly to international. So yes. Prof, uh, if you give full support, we will go higher. Yeah, just one example, just one question. Uh, has Jakim, uh, all the other uh, uh, Muslim organization saw your presentation? Have you given them an intense presentation that, that you give to us, to them? Or are you just I mean, scratching the surface? I mean, we really need to sit down and get their minds on this. Then we can get, we don't want local distractions. Lah. I mean, sometimes the local distraction, especially from the religious body, if they are together with us, I think inshallah we can, we can create a very solid sort of platform moving forward. Uh, actually, that's it. they know. They know about this uh, presentation. Uh, they know, but we, we have delegated the responsibility, Tansi. Uh, their team will focus on the, I mean, uh, for example, in terms of the Islamic input. Uh, whereas quantum will focus on the integrative medicine. 
but when it comes to the ibadah camp uh, we Kuantan lead uh, we lead because number one we have the manpower we have student we have many maulana maulana in Kuantan we have uh, pro hafiz here our dr muhammad whereas jakim they will give input in terms of budget uh, so jakim will give input on budget Whereas you uh, know other university they will do research, uh, so we do it as a team. We do it together because I cannot do it alone. So we delegate the task. Uh, but maybe you can see that I maybe just behind the curtain, and I prefer to be behind the curtain. <laughs> I don't like glamour. <laughs> Otherwise they will attack me. Otherwise the pro LGBT will attack me. So those yang not to say prefer glamour, prefer publicity, we leave it them to work to deal with uh, Siti Kasim, for example. Uh, so that these people much like Prof Rafida, so they they more apa orang kata uh, glamour lah because they they frontliner. But I prefer to be endliner, easy for me. I don't have to answer all these funny funny question raised by the LGBT movement lah. Yeah, I think I so think the best the, the best person some sort is to to educate orang yang dah dah go through. People, I mean, the the real LGBT or transgender themselves, they've gone the transformation. They speak for themselves. We don't have to speak for them, you know. If Nasi can speak, ah, yeah. for we need, but we need to educate them. We need to give them the tools how to make yeah, yeah. speakers, yeah. you know, to give them the confidence. I think that will be the next step. So these are the frontliners that will speak for themselves. They are not representing anybody, but they're representing yeah. themselves. And no people can say no because they've gone through an experience that nobody has gone through. You know, it's just like a cancer patient. You get, I mean, you get out of cancer because you experience it. Nobody can tell. Nobody can negate it. I think that's a most a powerful sort of a people. So we need to assemble orang macam ni yang bagi nak baca ada lah macam mana how to make public speaking. I think they they are able to do this, and I think we need to work on those on those things. The Pahang punya majlis agama macam mana? Uh, okay, okay, then see. They are very proactive. They are hardworking. They are helping us. Ah, uh, they are helping us. Uh, they are helping us. So I say, let's go. Inshallah. Yeah, yeah. Inshallah, then see. Okay, Prof. Samson, don't worry. We will be you. Okay. For another question from Nuruddin Nuruddin Akbar, he was asking on the uh, with in relation to the use of science to support their movement. Does this mean that the Islamization of knowledge? It's important to block the current LGBT. LGBT. Okay, Prof. Samtu. Yeah, yeah. The, the one for sure. Actually, uh, Islamization of knowledge, ni, we combine with science. We combine with science. For example, uh, Elmo Akli and Nakli, we combine together. So you will see the impact. You will see the impact. For example, I, I showed to you just now the the slide mention uh, Sheikh Yusuf Al Kardawi he mentioned about the adultery of fornication when it's doing in public so you will exposed to cholera uh, so this one is nothing to do with sign this is basically revelation hadith but now we relate to sign we relate to sign so sign mentioned that this cholera actually is not taun this cholera actually is hiv So when you combine this together and you explain to LGBT movement, this is checkmate to them. To me, Islamization is no, very right. significant, very important. That's why Kulia Medicine, we really give 100% focus on this issue from day one of uh, right. study for our students until final year. Yes, yes, right. yes, bro. Okay, thank you. Another question from Dr. Sukri Babur, I guess. Uh, the question was... Uh, Uh, what is a common practice in Malaysia or in other countries if he or he was born as Punza and want to determine either he or she will be formally declared male or female? Uh, no, normally, this case will get uh, medical attention immediately. The moment the, the, the baby born, the the doctor will give special attention, even urgent attention, because this is congenital defect. Kunsa is congenital defect. It's a chromosomal disorder. It's a organic. It's a physical illness. You can detect even though you are not doctor, because you have two genitalia. Uh, it's very obvious. But in LGBT, they are normal. They have no problem at all. Just because of the peer pressure, because of the 
they uh, soft a little bit then because of the maybe history of sexual abuse before they end up slowly as LGBT. But Kunsa is another chapter. Normally, normally the doctor will advise the parents if you want to give name, don't give name uh, sounds like brothers or sound like sister. You take half in between. Uh, for example, uh, Azni, Azni can be brother or can be sister. Uh, if the baby uh, with ambiguous genitalia or whatsoever. Lah. So that bila they grown up, so the name too, they, they, tak, they tak focus either sex. Uh, they helping this uh, this patient. Uh, but Kunsa is not okay, an issue. And this is, uh, okay. All right, okay. Another question, I believe from coming from outsider, from, from Gaffe Blonde TV. He was quite impressed with your presentation, Prof. Samson. And the question was, okay. uh, you are showing the faces of those act transgender, is it will affect them mm. negatively? No, no, no. Will this will affect them positively? Because this photo shown to the audience with their permission, and they told me, uh, "No problem, doctor. Please use it as uh, in positive manner, so that the community will understand us better." Uh, this one with their permission. Those without permission, right. I won't. I won't expose to the public. Right. Otherwise, okay, they will great. sue me. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. Any question I would like to open to the participant before I read another question coming from the chat box? Any question? No. Okay, Prof. Prof. KY. Okay, yes, okay, Prof. Samso, okay, Prof. Harith, please. Yes, yeah, Prof. Samso, first of all, I think I would like to congratulate and for your very hard work for the past many, many years. And Alhamdulillah, I think we saw very positive, uh, fruitful uh, outcome from your work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Uh, just that, I think now, uh, uh, listening to you, I think of course now you are just concentrating or focus in Kuantan. But how can we make this happen also at other places? Like you mentioned, uh, the, the, the cases are more serious in Lembah Kelang and other things. So it, do we have a yeah. plan for that? Uh. Oh, this one... Very interesting question, Prof. Very interesting question. Uh, at the moment, we focus in Kuantan because Kuantan is uh, considered as Hatnyai East Coast of Malaysia. This is what they label. So at the moment, in the short-term planning, we focus in Kuantan. But for the long-term planning, inshallah, we are going to Bukit Bintang. Uh, Bukit Bintang, Kuala Lumpur, because this is another big project. But this one, I need a big team in Gombak. That's why we must be working in good stuff, very systematic stuff. I cannot do it alone. We need strong support from Gombak. Uh, but I, I noticed Gombak actually much, much better than Kuantan. Gombak, they have many Maulana in IRK. Kuantan, we are scientists, we are not Maulana. <laughs> we are Maulana. <laughs> but in Gomba, I noticed we have many Maulana and they have much, much better knowledge compared to me. Um, the moment I talk about Islam, I talk about uh, Al-Quran and Hadith, the LGBT will say, you are not qualified to say about Islam because you are scientist, you are doctor, better you keep quiet. <laughs> so this is our main problem. But I notice if we can pair up, team up, with Gomba, mm -hmm. I think we can do much, much better. Uh, okay. Maybe, maybe so far we have the team from counseling unit and also from IRK, uh, Prof. No, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is the stepping stone, uh, stepping stone to move further. And I noticed uh, actually in Gomba, we also have this problem, but I'm sure, I'm sure the team in Gomba can do much better than us in Kuantan. Uh, but we prefer to work uh, slowly, quietly, because this is very sensitive. Uh, Sometimes we we afraid UAE will get uh, will get a negative reputation because of this program, as if we are supporting LGBT. Actually, we are not. We are doing mm. rehabilitation. Mm. So it will Prof. Okay, thank you. All right. Okay. Can I have one one follow? Up? Yeah. I I thought okay, following Faris punya too. I think. Uh, we need to also look uh, into our own house, which means to say you mentioned uh, there are probably some influence on our students. Yeah. So I, I think we need we need to we need to nip things in the bud. 
we need to involve our students on this. I mean, the the the, the point that you make, there's a lot of awareness uh, issues that I think most of us do not understand. I'm I'm sure students are also not understanding this. So mungkin kita boleh mula dengan dengan students. Uh, since I saw uh, Dr Zul punya uh, ni, uh, how can we work with the student to broad to broaden the base? That in that understanding of this uh, GDP problem ni, uh, is relevant to youngsters who are being persuaded or you know being pushed into a corner. That at the end of the day, this will be an option uh, for them to think about. So I think we need to engage them at that level, and that's why I'm quite interested. Also, kalau boleh kita introduce this free elective as 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 an academic option, yeah, yeah. but otherwise just general information the student must know uh, as to what, uh, for example, HIV is going down uh, because of no more drugs use, but you know the the sexual orientation is the one. What are the trends forward? I think all these students must know so that they can make informed decision yeah. as well. And this is after all our data, and I think we can share it with them. I don't know what platform. Uh, you also mentioned when you talk about this, I saw as uh, uh, sustainable development when you quote United Nations 2030. Uh, could this be part of the UNGS 2021? I'm not too sure. Or 20, uh, 1201. Could this be part of it? That kang ni kita tak ada tu now. Maybe there's a legitimacy to put this in as part of the UNGS 1201 or whatever. What are the causes? But these are common inf- information. That I think we must disseminate. No point keeping it to yourself because it will not do any good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Correct, correct, correct. Tansi. Actually, this is in line with our UNGS, our for sure, our SAF, our flagship. Even Tansi, our student is the 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 main pillar. They are the key important people that make the program sustainable after even after 10 years. Because I I cannot give 100% to staff because they already overburdened, overloaded. So normally we give to our student because student number one they have the association. For example, like student union, they also have uh, things like. Ele- Because in Kuala Lumpur we have elective, so they do this as elective. Uh, but I'm not so sure either how to open for other Kuala if the the student interested to join in. Uh, maybe we can discuss this further. But so far we plan to have master, but this master for postgraduate for undergraduate I'm not so sure. But in Kuala we have no problem. Tansi. In Kuala we open to other Kuala and many Kuala involves all the six Kuala in Kuala already in. But in Gombak. Maybe we can try with IRK because this is very much related to them. But I really appreciate if I can have an I call because we have problem to communicate to debate with pro LGBT because they use act acta which we are not so well upon to understand about this issue. Uh, that's why if we can have I call their student, maybe they can teach us the basic basic things lah. Oh. Yeah, right. Prof, I'm reading another question from Muhammad Anis Asfar Safa. Uh, do we have long-term studies showing the negative effects of the tran- transgenderism to the person that is actually practicing? Uh, uh, thank you to the. Thank you. Any long-term question. studies been done? Uh, so so far, we don't have the long-term study, but from our observation, from our observation. These people they have a uh, depression, depression because number one when they reach uh, elderly more than 60 years old, they have financial problem. They have financial problem because they are alone. They don't have family members. They they don't have parent. Even parent disown them. So in term of pusaka, they miss. They miss. So they have depression. Basically, they become dependent. They become dependent and they live with. Their own colleagues. Uh, so this is our observation. And then uh, number two, number two, if let's say they remove the penis, the problem is the prostate. The prostate still intact. So if you want to admit them in medical ward, cannot because they already remove the penis. If you want to admit into the female ward, also cannot because they are men. Uh, so it's quite difficult okay. because this prostate, 
they they become BPH, benign prostatic hyperpressure. So it's very troublesome if you want to do the management ke whatsoever ke. So at the end, they end up with depression. Uh, so from our observation, they have problem with depression. So that's why we do all out to help these people because number one, we don't have, they have this kind of uh, mental disorder. As I shown to you just now, majority of them commit suicide. That's why in Western country, majority commit suicide. Uh, but in Malaysia, so far, we don't have, we don't have any in Kuantan so far because we try our best, uh, not only in terms of uh, support, even treatment. We give the treatment to prevent from further depression. But this is good suggestion. Maybe we will proceed for long-term study. Thank you, thank you very much. Right, okay, thank you. My last uh, question from Prof. Zuzana Rahman. The question was, do we have section with the general community to educate them on this subject matter? Uh, yeah, yeah. Only family uh, thank you, thank you, Prof. Susan. Uh, actually, we have this awareness program almost every month, almost every month, either on radio or social media, because this is part and parcel of our responsibility as the health educator. Because this is the best way to do it, because better you prevent rather than you treat. If you want to treat LGBT, it's very tough and very difficult. So we go prevention uh, prevention by the 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 model the apa the capital model just uh, saliva just ileo just explain this is the spectrum of lgbt if you don't do it this is the complication so we just create awareness among the parents so that they understand don't give your baby boy your children kalau let's say the boy you give a uh, cooking set don't do it don't practice cross dressing if let's say the, you have daughter, don't give them football. Give them something relevant to them. So playing field, you must be according to their gender. But sometimes parents, because of poor parenting, they don't realize the complication later on. That's why we need to explain. We need to explain. And this is very common. Very common. We will get invitation either. Uh, normally, I was uh, invited by RTM. Even yesterday, day before yesterday, we have with Yadim on Facebook social media, explain about the LGBT in terms of awareness, uh, maslaha and masfada. Maybe right, okay, Prof. Prof. Can Prof. Do it. Since it's not with us, and I may allow, allow one last participant, any question before we end? Or you want me to read one question from the, the chat about last one? Okay, Prof. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where's the question? From Fazila Zainal Abide. Uh, the question was, have you encountered transgender that has background issues like autism? Mm, so far, no. Uh, so far, we don't have uh, transgender with autism. But pseudo-autism, yes, because of depression. I see. All right, okay, thank you. And then to close, uh, I would like to thank Prof. Samsul on the very informative talk. And I do believe that our fruitful event today will always keep us on guard in performing our responsibilities for the betterment of our new city, our nation, and ultimately for the Ummah. And let us all pray to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that he grant us with the wisdom to serve the new city and the Ummah. And with that note, I would like to thank to all staff and students who have participated in the event. And also not too, not too late for me to wish every one of you Ramadan Karim. And I'm passing back the mic to uh, Brother Muhammad Khairul Azam, please. Yes, uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor Kamaru Zaman Yunus, and also uh, our speaker, Prof. Samsul uh, Rahman. And I think this is a very good session as for me as a younger generation. And um, so with this, uh, we come, we come uh, to the end of the session. So may Allah continue to provide us with uh, his guidance and protection. So thank you again, everyone, for joining the session. And we end with Tasbih Farah and Suratul Ans.